living water. Throughout the Bible, water is used to demonstrate God's power, control, and judgment. It is also used to symbolize blessing, cleansing, and renewal. Let's take a look at some of these in both the poetry and prose of Scripture. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters, to separate the water under the vault from the water above it. God called the vault sky. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let dry ground appear. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, Let the water teem with living creatures. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water swarmed. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas. And God saw that it was good. God reminds Job that he ordained the boundaries of the waters. Who shut up the seas behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? when I made the clouds its garments and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, Thus far you may come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Then God created the perfect garden for mankind to live. Streams came up from the garden and watered the whole surface of the ground. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The first was Pishon, the second is Gihon, the third is the Tigris, and the fourth is the Euphrates. But mankind chose not to listen to God, and became so wicked that God decided to destroy them all, all except Noah, his family, and the pairs of animals that came to him. After building the ark, gathering the food and the animals, Noah closed the ark's door. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and covered all of the highest mountains by more than twenty feet. That would be seventeen thousand feet above sea level. Then after a hundred and fifty days, or five months, God sent a wind, or spirit, over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. But Noah and the animals remained on the ark another seven months until they had dry land, vegetation, pure water, and clean air. Then God said to Noah, I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. Never again will all the waters become a flood to destroy all living creatures of every kind on the earth. Let's move forward a thousand years to where the children of Israel are enslaved to the cruel Pharaoh of Egypt. You'll recall the story of Pharaoh's daughter finding a baby in the tall grass beside the Nile. The Bible tells us that the princess adopts the baby and names him Moses because she pulled him from the water. This baby grows to be the man who will lead the Israelites out of bondage. As they are making their escape into the desert, Pharaoh is hot on their trail, and in front of them is the Red Sea. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land. The waters were divided, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them, on their right hand and on their left. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Forty years later, the Israelites are finally ready to cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land under the leadership of Joshua. He commanded the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. The Lord said to Joshua, Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, Go and stand in the river. Now the Jordan was at flood stage, yet as soon as the priests reached the Jordan, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away. 
while the water flowing down to the Dead Sea was completely cut off. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priests to come out of the Jordan. And the priests came up out of the river carrying the Ark. When they set their feet on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage. Next we have the story of Jonah, the prophet sent by God to warn the city of Nineveh. Not liking the assignment, Jonah boarded a ship in the opposite direction. And when the Lord sent a huge storm, Jonah told the sailors to throw him overboard to quiet the sea. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled around me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah onto the dry land. The Psalms proclaim God's might and power over the waters of the earth while providing sustenance to mankind. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. The righteous person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over mighty waters. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Deep calls to deep and the roar of your waterfalls. All of your waves and breakers have swept over me. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. You care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you form to frolic there. All four Gospels report the baptism of Jesus by his cousin John. This is from the book of Mark. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All the people went out to him, confessing their sins they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. His message was this, After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee to be baptized by John in the Jordan. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. 
Jesus baptized the disciples and taught them to do the same. Jesus answered Nicodemus, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Soon after his resurrection, Jesus came to his disciples and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the Samaritan woman beside the well, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Sometime later, Jesus was attending the Feast of the Tabernacles. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Holy Spirit. Immediately after feeding the 5,000, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up the mountain alone to pray. Later that night, he was still there, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. The disciples saw him. It's a ghost, they cried in fear. They were terrified. But Jesus said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God.